Welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a tea to get started. It's an oolong tea, a woolong tea, oolong or woolong, depending on uh, who you hear it from. Scooping out enough here to cover the bottom, say inch to inch and a half bottom area of my gaiwan there. It's about a three ounce gaiwan. Water's been brought to an early boil. It's been started to rumble, not a full rolling boil. I want to swirl this water around so that those those uh, leaves get tucked underneath the surface of the water. They don't just sit on top and float. Get this kettle out of the way. Actually, I want just a splash more water. I want a little water to sit just above the rim of my lid when I put it on. Like so. That looks good. And now I can talk a little bit about this tea and kind of introduce it. This is from Yedza Tea Company. This is their Dongding Winter Peak. You can get uh, two ounces for $9.95 currently. Uh, information, this of course is a sample size of, of about half an ounce it says. Uh, you, this tea, information on the product page for this tea tells that this is from uh, the Lugu area in Nanto County of Taiwan. Uh, so that puts it in the uh, the, the, the proper uh, region of Dongding, where Dongding tea is uh, kind of produced and originally from, you could say. And there's even information and background about the particular farmer. His name is Chen Gaoxiu, uh, and you can find out more on the Yedza product page there. I'm going to talk about this tea and look at the aspects of the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor, starting off here with the dry. Uh, don't eat teas, don't eat oolongs, can get kind of roasted to various degrees, so that's, and there, can, there may be differences in oxidation levels as well. This one, I'm getting a little bit more of a toasty aspect, a little bit of a uh, English laurel, kind of woody, sweet floral type of combination there. Breathing on it, putting a little more warm, moist air. Gets a little bit more of a of a lightly toasted bread kind of smell coming off. Scooping out a few of these leaves and looking at them here. These are uh, green, yellow, light, pale, light green, over towards a bit of a darker olive drab type of color. Uh, Size-wise indicates that this is more than one leaf and more than in most occasions here you can see the stem that connects say two leaves, you know, the, the kind of traditional uh, very frequent is two leaves and a, and a bud so we'll see if that how often that kind of sh displays in the leaves that are steeping here. Um, yeah, tightly wrapped, tightly wadded like little tightly wadded paper balls, paper wads so uh, we'll be able to look at more of those in the, in the wet leaf though. So I'm going to return those to the package, close that out, get that out of the way. Get ready to pour now. I'm going to angle my lid over to the side. Uh, a lot of heat's gotten built up, so with a guy one, it's, it's good to have the skill, the, the, the comfort level of holding the rim of the lid, using your index finger to hold the rim of the bowl rather and your index finger holds the lid there in place so you can get kind of nice quick pours shaking out the fingers are slipping so use an extra hand there fingers so shaking out those last few drops I'm going to give this a shake so that those leaves kind of settle back down to the bottom now I can smell the wet leaf and kind of talk a little bit about the wet leaf here A light, a light. Uh, first thing that hit was a light beanie note, and then that kind of uh, like a, uh, a lightly boiled lima bean type of smell. But that that moved off fairly quickly, and that was it was very brief actually. And you got more of the sweeter, uh, like I said, that English laurel type of smell, kind of a mm, a hint of hyacinth jumped out for a second. Sweet cream. 
mascarpone type of smell. So nice, sweet fragrances there. Again, uh, English laurel, a, a hint of hyacinth, a bit of a mascarpone kind of smell. So that's nice. Let me pull out a few of these leaves or leaf sets, maybe, if, if they are. So here we've got uh, one, two, three, four, and a very delicate tip right there on the end. So I'll lay that there. What else do we have? I have a little bit of an independent stem here. Uh, what else we got? A leaf. Pulling out this leaf. This leaf is nearly completely unfurled. It's uh, intact. I don't see any missing portions of the leaf. And looking at this leaf, I see some jagged, the jagged edges of the, of the leaf. Uh, blotches, little, the little teeth there are starting to get kind of rust red color. On the other side, a little bit of, of a blotchy rust oxidation type color has taken place here and there. Spots of that on this individual leaf. There's a little tip or a bud there as well. So that's kind of nice to look at, interesting to see. I'll press that down flat. Uh, what else? So what I, you know, what you see here is you see two, three leaves in a bud. You see some individual buds, I mean individual leaves here and there. Uh, most of the leaves I'm noticing have nearly completely unfurled. Here's one that hasn't yet fully unfurled, uh, but uh, this particular steep time, most of these can be teased open and teased out flat after one steeping. So I'm going to set that to the side. Get, uh, get ready for a pour here. Hold that up to the light. And you see that's a nice golden yellow deep color. Sweet cream, sweet buttery type of smell coming off a little bit of the English laurel there as well. Uh, a slight tinge of that, uh, a slightest tinge of that kind of beany type of smell. Let's get it, uh, let's get a taste here. It looks nice in the cup, bright and clear. Actually, fairly gentle in its uh, astringency. There's a, 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 a silkiness there that kind of uh, exhibits a little bit of a dry characteristic. Low on, on bitterness, no bitterness really to, to, to speak of. The woody uh, English laurel aspects are the kind of the dominant aroma here. As this tea cools, though, it's getting a, it's picking up a bit more of the uh, the hyacinth, the, the sweet floral aspect there. The aftertaste is starting to pick up now as well. I'm getting a bit more of a uh, a light honey, to a nectar. Again, it's related to that kind of flower floral type aspect. Those elements are present underneath the back of my tongue. Let me let this cool just a little bit more. I'm, I'm tempted to pour, but I should actually let this cool. That'll, that'll cool off a little faster. Dongding teas. Um, Dongding is generally, uh, as a rule, they're not one of the highest elevation type of uh, oolong teas. So they, the, the higher levels, you get more the, the gentler, gentler, the more delicate, the more uh, complex floral type components. The Dondine gets more of a roasty element there. So let me give this another shot and see. But again, that oxidation can be a factor there. Let me give this another sip as it cool, has cooled a little more. Mm. 
Yeah, the, the, the floral, the sweet nectary aspects are, are picking up as this cools. So, and in the aftertaste, they're, they're holding on longer. So that's a positive note. Um, looking at this tea as a whole, it's got, it's got some nice, like I said, the nice floral. It's got some staying power in the back, the aftertaste. It's got, uh, it's, uh, it's not a harsh texture. It's not a excessively smooth texture either. It's just kind of a, a, a gentle silken. It's not, a, there's not a harsh uh, stranitzi or bitterness to this. So this is a fairly well-rounded tea. It's something to look at as a kind of a daily drink tea. I would give this one, oh, I would give this one an, an 87. So come back to Walker Tea Review to find teas that can be your, your daily drink teas, your, your special occasion teas, and, and those in between.